All right. So coming out of chapter two, uh, one of the things that uh, people asked about, or I know people had a um, little bit of a question on, is the distribution of data. So we have certain shapes that we're going to come across that will represent the distribution of data. So the first one that we're looking at is your uh, bell-shaped curve, which is going to represent your normal distribution. All right. So this is one you most definitely want to hold on to and remember. It's symmetric about the mean. So the mean would be in the middle right here. And the bulk of your data would be, you know, in this middle. And then as you go further away from the mean to the right or to the left, then, you know, less and less of your data would be. So this one you most definitely want to hold on to. Uh, it will come up. Uh, all throughout the rest of the course, your bell-shaped curve. Uh, it's symmetric about the mean. So in other words, what's going on on the right side of the mean is the same thing that's going on on the left side of the mean. And um, it's considered your normal distribution. Right. And of course, if I uh, go, too, go up too fast, uh, you know, let me know. I can come back down or slow up or whatever the case may be. The next one is uniform distribution. Um, it's all distributed at the same level across the board. All right, the next one is uh, when your data is skewed left. So that means the bulk of your data, I know when you say skewed left, it sounds like your data is pushed to the left. But in actuality, if your data set is skewed left, that means the tail of your data is to the left. And that means the bulk of your data is going to be over here to the right. So your tail is to the left whenever your data is considered skewed left. And then if your data is skewed right, that means the tail of your data is to the right and the bulk of your data is over here to the left. So the majority of your data will be actually be to the left if your data is skewed right. So you're actually looking at the tail where the least amount of your data is in order to consider in order to figure out whether it's skewed left or skewed right. Any questions on those? <clears throat> All right, so scrolling up. So the next thing um, people have questions about, stem leaf plot. It's another way to uh, graph or to show a give a visual of your data set. So your leaf is going to be the rightmost digit of a data value. Your stem will be all of the values that precede the rightmost digit. So here we have two examples. If I had the number 53, my leaf is the right, uh, three is the rightmost digit. So three would be my leaf and then five would be my stem. That's everything that precedes the three. If I had 127, my leaf will be seven. That's the rightmost digit. And then 12, one and two will be considered my stem.
All right. Before we do an example with that, any questions? All right. So let's say we have a data set, 41, 50, 56, 71, 72, 72, 75, 80, 80, 82, 83, 84, 88, 88, 89, 91, 92, 93, 100, 101, 101, and 112. I'll give you a chance to write down the data set. All right, so it's important when you're trying to um, create a stem leaf plot, you locate the minimum and maximum value. So our smallest value is 41, largest value is 112. So this data set goes from the 40s to the 110s. And let me erase this. All right, so it's going from the 40s to the 110s. So that's how we will set up our stems. We go um, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s, and then 110s. Those will be our stems. Mm -hmm. So now for each uh, value, data value that we see, there should be a leaf. So you have four for the 40s. The value that we have is 41. So that one will go here. There are no other 40s. So we, don't have, we wouldn't write anything else under 40s. Then we will go to the 50s. You have 50 and then 56. And that's it. So there are no 60s. What we do not do is put a zero here because that would represent the number 60. We would just leave it blank and then go to the 70s. So then you have 71, 72, and then 72 appears twice. And you write 75. If there are no more 70s, go to your 80s. And you keep on with that same thought process. We have two 80s, 82, 83, 84. And we have 88, 88, 89. All right, then we have 91, 92, 93, 100, okay, 101, 101, and then 112. I think that's it. So, and that's how you represent um, those data values with that data set using the stem leaf plot. All right, before we go any further, is everybody okay with what we did? Make sure we're okay. All good here. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the response. And so you may, you may ask, well, why would you use something like this? Well, it always depends on uh, who your audience is. You know, with statistics, it's all about appealing to your audience. Or if you do any type of presentation, it's about appealing to your audience. Um, if you have an uh, audience, that enjoy numbers, then uh, this would be something that would be more beneficial. Or if you like someone who, uh, or you have an audience that may, you know, maybe, um, you know, maybe talking to someone, a group of people who are dealing in arts or whatever the case may be, and you know that picture would be more appealing, then, um, you know, just using a regular bar graph would be more beneficial in this case, you know, because that's all this is, is just another way of doing a bar graph. You know? So it's really about appealing to your audience. Uh, when it comes to statistics, you know, um, 
you can use any numbers to say what you would like. You know, that's why you know, when it comes to politics, uh, if you really look at stats, there's no reason to get high or low on them whenever someone makes a statement because you know that you can uh, take numbers and say what you would like. You can um, say one side and then take the same numbers and then go the other way with it if you know how to manipulate numbers right. So, um, you know, that's what statistics is all about. You know, case in point is that uh, we'll come across outliers. Uh, when you look at them in your definition, you'll see them, but we'll also use them. Um, and they'll say, you know, you run your data. If you have any outliers, run your data with your outliers, then run your data without the outliers. And whichever one fits your case the best, then that's what you will use. So in other words, if someone were to ask you, well, let's say you leave out the outliers, someone were to ask you, well, hey, didn't you have this in your data set? Why didn't you include them? Well, you say, well, they were outliers. Now, outliers are going to be extreme values that aren't normal. And so you say, hey, I left them out because they were outliers. They're not normal. Um, but then let's say you use them because they help your case. And then you, someone say, well, why did you use these values? Aren't they outliers? You say, well, yes, but they were a part of my observation. So it's like you have a reason to use them or a reason to leave them out if you would like. And that's how people play with numbers and statistics. And uh, unfortunately, it can get people to go their way or not go their way, uh, depending on the data values that they use or go a certain way versus not going a certain way, depending on the data values they use and how they use them. And, um, you know, and nobody's going to check them because nobody want to do the math, you know. So, um, and they're banking on people not wanting to do the math. So, you always want to make sure, you know, be careful with, you know, getting too high and too low once people spit out numbers. Because uh, they can be used in the other direction if you know the person wanted to. Uh, so let's see. Um, I think that is pretty much it. I think the next stuff set of stuff is chapter three. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as far as questions, a lot of it in chapter one and two is straightforward. You know, I showed you about showed you the definitions and the things that are they're asking of you in chapter one and chapter two. So, but if you have any questions on anything, make sure you, know, you ask. Uh, next class, I'll open the floor up for any questions, if anybody ha have them. Um, and make sure you keep lines of communication open. If you're having troubles getting those defin to definitions to me by Wednesday, don't ask me in front of the class. Shoot me an email, you talk about it, make sure you're straight. It is still better to turn it in late or to work out something than to just not turn it in at all. You do not want a zero for no reason, all right? Um, any questions on anything? Because remember, I'm not going to see you until next Wednesday. Whole another week will pass. Because uh, remember, Martin Luther King's birthday is on Monday. All right, everybody good? Everybody straight? Yeah, I got a quick question. Um, yep. for the definitions, are those um, how do we get those to you? Do we send those to you by email? Yes, email's fine. All right, all right, thank you. Yep, not a problem. Oh, I also had a question. Yep, I'm listening. Um, you said email, but I tried emailing you through like your TCC email and Canvas, and I got no response. Okay, when did you email me? Uh, like either yesterday or the day before. Okay, well, if you emailed me yesterday, um, I got a whole, I got flooded with emails yesterday, so I'm still trying to play catch up. So, okay. um, let's just see if um, and he said Raven. Let me, uh, let me check right now. And somebody said, ask me, is it due? Well, uh, no, next Wednesday. So your stuff is due on the 20th. The definitions are due on the 20th. So let me see if I got an email in there. I can ask one of my questions in here right quick. Mm -hmm. um, so I just ordered the access code through Barnes & Noble because like, mm -hmm. like the financial aid, I guess. And so I don't know when it's going to be ready. And so, like, if I do the 14-day free trial, I'm hoping that it'll be ready by then. Mm -hmm. But, like, if it's not, what do I do? Um, there's no penalty. It's just that it will lock you out until you get the code. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's, I would say just go ahead and use the 14-day free pass. If you already ordered it, it's coming. Yeah, um, yeah, and so you should be fine. And, you know, if you like, it just so happened to go past the 14 days, as soon as you get the access code, it'll, it'll pick, let you pick up where you left off. Okay. Yep. And yes, I do see your email. I just haven't gotten to it yet. So I'll get to it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. 
All right. Anybody else before we close? So remember, next class, um, I'll open the floor, see if anybody have any questions. Um, but then we'll jump into uh, chapter three. Remember chapter one, chapter two, pretty much just definitions, definition based. And uh, chapter three is when we uh, start getting into calculation. Some of you probably already seen them before, mean, mode, and median, you know, calculating the average uh, range and all the stuff like that. So that's stuff that I'm uh, pretty sure a lot of you have ran across before. But if not, um, don't worry about it. It's easy calculations uh, that we start just starting off with. So we'll be, we'll be fine. All right. So if everybody's good, I am good. Uh, I will see you on, don't forget, next Wednesday, which is the 20th, because we have, have Monday off. So have a great weekend. Be safe. Have a great weekend. Be safe. And I will see you on Monday. I mean, Wednesday. See you on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Take care.